Hi there again everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and I'm happy to say I am back. Uh, had an extended vacation, you haven't seen a lot of videos from me uh, in about a month or month and a half. So uh, we're going to make up for that now and we're going to put uh, a whole bunch of videos on all of the projects that I've got on the bench right now. Um, I'm on a little bit of a leave of absence from work so I can get a lot done over the course of the next three weeks or so. Uh, so look for some great project uh, updates coming on things like uh, the 48 scale arc model uh, type 7 in the background there. I've got some uh, RC prep going on for a big skipjack uh, model. I've got a beautiful little 30 second scale conning tower for a type 7. And I've also got a uh, static display for uh, Nautilus coming up here. So look for those uh, coming up in the very near future. But in the meantime, got a neat little side project. This is only going to take me uh, about an hour and uh, kind of has to do with the U-boat there. So what we've actually got here um, is an authentic um, Nazi eagle. Uh, this is from a, a collector friend of mine who collects memorabilia from World War II. Um, it's made from uh, pot metal, white pot metal, and unfortunately when it got shipped to him from Germany, the poor critter's uh, wing got broken clean off. Um, that pot metal is about between a sixteenth of an inch and maybe three thirty seconds of an inch thick. Uh, it bent, it kind of, of sheared off, some pieces got um, missing there. But what I ended up doing, I used a product called Solder It, for, specifically for pop metal, uh, and I soldered it back together again. I put some auto body filler in there just to fill any of the you know voids and everything. So uh, our little eagle there is all repaired and uh, he is ready for a new paint job. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and replicate this metallic sheen that's on there. And uh, basically what I'm going to do here in the next few minutes, I'm going to hit it with uh, some self-etching primer, get it prepped for paint. I'm going to base it uh, with some satin espresso uh, by Rust-Oleum there. That'll give the kind of brownish base coat and then we're going to do some dry brushing. So let's see how that turns out. All right, we got some primer on there. Um, I'm not super happy. Uh, it's a little rough right there, so I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, glazing putty on. I'm going to smooth out some of the knobby little uh, edges in there, uh, get it looking nice and pretty. And I, I really like this stuff, but it's, it's what I would recommend only for shallow um, blemishes uh, on a model. Uh, it's really just a, a skim coat to even out the... Um, the surface finish, uh, anything more than, you know, uh, something that's really shallow and what you're going to end up with uh, are cracks and it won't uh, settle very well. So I'm just going to fill this in uh, with my finger and uh, we're going to let that dry. I'm going to get a little on the bottom and once that's all set up, I'll sand it and then we'll hit it with another coat of primer and see where we're at. Okay, got the uh, repairs all done, the sanding all done, the filling all done, and I am just uh, hitting the model with some of this satin brown to form the base coat for the uh, bronze effect that we're going to do. So I'm going to continue on that, uh, let it all dry, and then we're going to move on to some dry brushing. Okay, the base coat is on, uh, it's completely dry. Now all I'm going to do is a little bit of dry brushing to make this thing look like uh, bronze, you know, something closer to what it was earlier. And uh, to do that, I've just got some, uh, you know, testers gold paint and uh, a large soft bristled brush. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a little bit of, of paint on the end of that and just going to uh, wipe it off, just, just so that there's barely anything coming 
off of the brush um, when I start painting. And then what I'm going to do is just really softly brush the model. And I just use nice light strokes, just letting the, the bristles do all the work. If it gets to the point where you have to push too hard to, uh, to get the paint off, um, it's time to, to reload the, uh, the brush up. So this is what I'm going to do now uh, over the course of the next uh, few minutes. I'll check back in, in in a bit and see how it turns out. All right, here we go. This is the um, quasi-finished product. Just got to get her mounted back uh, on the stand again. Um, but you can see this is the, uh, the repaired area. If you look really close, you know, you're going to be able to find it. I wasn't able to blend in all of the uh, feather details, but you know, from more than a foot or two away, uh, it turned out really, really well. The idea with this uh, finish is to make sure that any areas that would see you know, lots of wear where it would be rubbed, like the leading edges, um, those get the most treatment. They get the shiniest part, you know, the, the beak as well. Um, whereas like in the backs of the wings, uh, a little bit darker, only the, the top edges get, uh, get brushed. So this is the, uh, you know, the, the finished eagle. I'm gonna get it mounted back up on its uh, stand and we'll give you guys one last look and see how it turns out. Okay, here we go. This is the finished product uh, mounted back on its marble display base. Looks pretty darn cool. Um, one thing that I did do afterwards, I was, I was kind of disappointed with how monochromatic it was looking. So I gave it a, just a little bit of a wash uh, of really diluted black paint. And that uh, just kind of low lighted uh, some of the recesses in there. I think it, uh, it made it pop just a little bit more. Turned out really, really... Good. So, thanks for joining me. Uh, yet again, like I said, watch for some more videos on some actual RC submarine stuff coming up in the very near future. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. Email me at any time, bob at rc-sub.com. We'll catch you next time.